It is 632. I'll call us to order. So all you people come here early? <laughs> you are you're just Mr. On Time. I know everyone else is. I said, you know, they won't be there yet. There's too much going on. <laughs> and they're all here as if like I got here for the break. It's the pizza that draws them in. I'm <laughs> very impressed. On my second pizza. <laughs> um, first, well, actually now it's a second order of business because call to orders happened. Um, public comment. I do not see any members of the public have joined us live or via Zoom. Um, so we're moving on to the approval of the minutes of February 15, 2022. It's a succinct one pager. And I actually haven't had a chance to look at it. We could just kind of go quiet for a moment or two and see if uh, <clears throat> it needs any amending before um, we approve these February 15th minutes. Um, in the director's report, did these things happen? Uh, 6% compensation increase and uh, website upgrades? Um, so the compensation increase was a COLA of, it is actually 5.9. Mm -hmm. So that did happen. Mm. Um, finalizing inventory, I'm not sure that that's complete. The website is certainly not complete, it's still in the works. And obviously, because we're still working on um, and getting people to come to the, to the uh, school programs, the yeah. summer programs. Mm. And definitely been having on point talk to staff about compensation. Uh, do people see any need for fixes, typographical or otherwise? I've just got PayPal account, the abbreviation on a BACCT minor. Um, the welcoming of our new board members is put under new biz, but I thought we did that first. And I don't know if that matters that the order of the minutes reflect the order in which things happen. I have no opinion, but I'm, I'm noticing it. So it's it's documented, welcome, welcome, yeah. uh, that it's not I'm okay with. It. Sounds like not an issue. Mm -hmm. Not great. <clears throat> Um, if people and did the other thing happen, the John Block studio naming? Uh, it has, so nothing's been done with it. There, I mean, I think I'm thinking of a plaque or something like that could be done in here, but you know, it, we are sitting in the John Block, studio. yeah, good, great. Um, I think that it might be a little bit clearer to say that the new board members were seated at the beginning of the meeting in terms of votes, and yeah, motions. there's not really any declarative statement that they were appointed to the decision. <clears throat> okay, so in the approval of the minutes, thank you. I think that is important, but particularly since you guys were votable early on, not late on. Um, that actually was part of the conversation. Uh, so any motion to approve minutes will get the typo and uh, the moving of <clears throat> your welcoming to, did you create its own line item? Yeah, so, in that, in that, yeah. yeah. So, with appointment of new directors, and I would just say, you know, we need a statement that says that Rachel and, and Chad were. Yeah, it appointed. came directly after public comment. It would be taped, but. Okay. So, okay, you, you make a good point. That's not such a petty move that's worth doing. Um, I, if, if people are continuing to see things, we can catch them or could entertain a, a motion to accept. I'll move that we accept the meetings with minor changes. Uh, Mike Doyle uh, so moves to accept the February 15, 2022 minutes with the uh, two changes. I'll, I'll second. And Sue has seconded. Um, all those in favor of accepting the February 15, 2022 minutes, please indicate by saying aye. 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 And opposed. That is uh, unanimous. Order of business taken care of. Uh, moving us to the treasurer's financials reports, which um, Mike Doyle 
or you'll lead us off and it'll, it'll bleed into Rob. <clears throat> or, PayPal has gone up considerably from the last time I saw PayPal. Last time I saw PayPal was about $15. It is now 3049 and 79 cents. In our checking, we have $5,924.06. Our savings, looks like we just got a check. Our savings is 1,000, wait a minute, it's gonna take that. 179,000. That's better. <laughs> Seven hundred and seventy-two dollars and uh, no cents. We've got something called Youth Lab, which I don't remember, but uh, Youth Lab apparently has got twenty-two thousand six hundred and forty-one dollars and eighty cents in, in that account. Okay, thank you. So to clarify, the, the PayPal account going up is due to the people who are signing up for the. The youth, the camps, the now, yep. <laughs> and then the youth lab is a separate account that Christopher does have a signing power on that is for the, specifically for the summer camp. And it's down two grand from February, which means there may have been some expenses in there. So. Marketing and getting the word out. Yep. Okay. Uh, questions? <laughs> I, I do have a question. Are we on TV right now? <laughs> no, but we are being recorded. We are being recorded. <clears throat> okay. It will end up on YouTube within the week. Typically, yeah. yeah. Um, actually, we had one of the meetings you missed. We had a really informative um, uh, presentation from an Edward Jones guy. Do you remember his name? Um, his name is... Mark Gwynn. So if that's Gwynn oh, actually yeah. available. Um, and this these proceedings will also be available too, but they're not live streaming. Okay. And actually he shared some financial advice that was like, eh, is that something you want to get on the out in the public world? He, it, he was concerned it may look make him look like he was pitching a specific stock. So Rob, you know, tactfully edited that little little slice out. So yeah, we're not on the live stream, okay. which you've oh, just oh, referenced now. <laughs> <laughs> I now you have to now you have to edit that out. That's, I'm making the point, right? <laughs> okay. Uh, well, we can't. You know. Mike states we are hiding things in our edit. No, no, no. That's not what I'm saying that we were doing our guests a good a good service by doing Mark said that he, did he was robustly that. sharing his knowledge and. Uh, and he said it was. I think that was very minor that it could. Yeah, it was could be right. Could right. Sure. Yeah, it was just, and they're well trained as the sure. where those lines are. Um, Rob, do you want to roll into the budgetary portion? Of sure. The so you have the, the budget versus actuals. Um, you know that I, there's not a lot of things that I saw. The one thing I did see that was a little bit scary was the meals and entertainment at ninety seven percent. And I looked it up, and it's because we are actually we paid the invoice for the van annual meeting next week, which we will get reimbursed for. About fourteen hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. So that's why that one was up. Um, that's not extravagant pizza prices. <laughs> well, on that note, is um, the 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 van Orca is hosting the first in person Vermont Access Network meeting since twenty nineteen. Yes, and. All board members are invited Friday. Next Friday, the 6th of May. Lunch is at noon and you can stay for the workshops. You can come for the business pieces, but they're boring or I don't know. Are they welcome? Welcome <laughs> for the morning as well as the afternoon. Yeah. So the, uh, I think, you know, 9 to 9.30 is pastries and coffee. And then business starts at 9.30 or 10. Uh, so they go through the reports and talk about, um, you know, financials, but uh, approve the budget. And then there's voting for new board members. They're also looking at the new statewide um, programming committee members to be voted on. Uh, there are some vendors who do show up and, and showcase some of their products. Uh, and then we have lunch and in the afternoon we break out into sessions. We typically have two sessions. One is sort of geared towards the gearheads, the tech people. 
and they and then there's another one that's sort of geared towards executive directors and policy. So this year, I, and I was just at the van meeting, van board meeting this morning. The idea is that the policy one is really going to be geared towards the statewide channel and what to do with it now. And I don't know if the new board members know this, but a couple of years ago, uh, there was um, mediation that happened between Comcast and the state of Vermont concerning their certificate of public good. They had sued the federal court and the federal court required that we go into mediation. And as part of that mediation agreement, which we finally got to after probably three or four sessions that summer, was that they offered, because one of the things we've been asking for is HD channels or for our channels to be in high definition. And they've been resisting that. So what they offered was a statewide high definition channel to be managed by the Vermont Access Network. And I chaired the committee that set that up. It's now been in place and operating since December of 2020. Is it been 2019? Um, and we're there, what do we do with this station? How do we, you know, there's sort of a different idea. It's like you could go anywhere from promoting Vermont and tourism to only showcasing the access centers themselves, themselves and the content that comes out of them. So there's a pretty robust discussion happening in Van with regard to uh, what do we do with this asset that we have, which people recognize is a pretty valuable asset. And presently, it's kind of public access where it sits but, and does not do independent production. Discussion of perhaps, you know, I think the, the biggest discussion is capacity to actually manage it. You know, we got the channel, but we got no operating funds, and Comcast was very adamant about the fact that there would never be any additional funds. So right now, it's being managed coming out of the band dues. Um, there's probably fifteen thousand in there that is going towards a somebody who schedules the channel. Um. And then there's a bunch of money sitting there that, that they did give towards capital expenditures for equipment and stuff like that. So um, there's some talk about what do we do with that? Is it limited to what we can do with it? But the idea is that you know this thing is such an asset that we should be able to uh, capitalize on it and even monetize it somehow, and you know with its underwriting. But even that discussion gets into: Are you competing with the local access center? If you're going out after sponsorships and underwriting for this statewide channel when we're trying to figure out how we're going to maintain our, our own budgets and stuff like that. So there's... Was that agreement a uh, president setting? Has Comcast done that in any other states or other places? No, not that I know of, not an H1. Because we may want to uh, blow our horn, horn on that. Yeah. yeah. I know they've certainly been interested in Massachusetts when I've been talking about it. So I serve on the Alliance for Community Media Northeast Region Board and we'll report on what's going on in Vermont. And so they've been very interested in what's been going on with the statewide channel and also the the, the work that the van community has been doing with regard to going to the legislature for an appropriation. Well, maybe we can name it the uh, Chapman Compact. <laughs> so to attend the meeting on Friday, do we have to register in advance? Or so there's a free ticket, you know, okay. I just let you know that, uh, if you are interested, just let me know and I can, or I can send you the link or I can just sign it up ourselves. Okay, See you the day again. Friday the 6th. Six, six, yeah. I'm going to show up for lunch and beyond, but yeah, the morning's open too. Yeah, what time does the, um, I forget what you call the morning stuff, the, <clears throat> the business part? Yeah, so I think it's 10 to like noon for that. Okay, well, after that, I would probably, I yep. pop by, yeah. So the, yeah, you want to come for lunch at noon? After, 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 after lunch. lunch, probably. Yeah. So is it over there? Yep. I mean, depending on what's going on, yeah. I'd love to sort of, sort of pop by and serve. Absolutely. So why don't you send us all the link? I will. Yeah. Send it all. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Sure. I guess back to the financials. Does Van pick up? Do are we fully expensing that ourselves? No. Uh, and it was surprising because you know when I was Van president, I used to try to get the whole state in place to to pay, but Van's budget is at the point now where they feel although it's this this particular rental. Um, is more than they had budgeted, um, but they have approved the additional expenditure uh, in part because, you know, it used to be we'd go to the access center, but because it's getting quite large in the number of people that are attending. Yeah, turnouts like 70, 60, 60 to 70 people. Um, many access centers can not facilitate that. So we took it over to the chapel. Uh, <clears throat> even in COVID, we wanted to be able to throw some, elbow, spread some elbow yeah. room and stuff like that. So the college, you know, rented us the chapel and then there's a uh, room underneath two for the breakout sessions too. And then the food. So, 
When the chapel, when the, we get, they rent the chapel to us. Do they get um, publicity for being community minded? Not that I know of. Shouldn't we make sure they do? Because we may want to rent that again. Sure. Yeah. Post chapel. I will pass it on to my. All right. Not the predecessor. What's the opposite of predecessor? Successor. <laughs> Successor. <laughs> Um, more questions, commentary. Would you like me to go uh, see you, the Ed Jones statement? Or that sense? makes good sense. Yeah, yeah, some videos like we'll quickly pull that out of my office. Oh, um, the, the the market hit. You yeah. got a, you got a number you can dig up. Yep. Yeah, okay. Minute, Michael. It sounds like a pause for refreshments. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> Have you seen Bill? Uh, the last time I saw Bill was at the beginning of the summer. And so I, last, last Sunday, yeah. that was that was when, when COVID broke for the first time and everybody had their two vaccines, they allowed me to go in and see him. And then, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah just last Sunday. Then, then things happened. Uh, when I saw him, I don't think he. Exactly remember who I was. Now it could have been a way to steal him that particular day. It would have been a long winter for him to really know. I did overhear a couple of people talking. I think it was in my slash restaurant. They had seen Bill or something. And he was okay. That's all I overheard. Okay. <laughs> all I overheard. <laughs> Wow. Strong member of the board. I'm meeting some people for the first time. Hi, I see you. Hi, CJ. Oh, nice to see you, sir. Yes, indeed. Nice to Did you nice land a plane nice out of the here. comments? Or did you just yeah. walk in from a car? I just walked in from a car, but I did land a plane yesterday at Lebanon oh. um, and called in a, a swap list. Well, I was thinking last night when I saw the uh, temperature change planes, the two skydivers that had two planes, oh and they goodness. decided to see if they could switch planes in the air. They Unfortunately, one of the planes crashed. Yeah, they pulled a shoot on it. Um, but <laughs> not only that, but I heard, and it's just true that the FAA has been like, don't do that, and they did it anyways. Yes. Mm. That is uh, never, ever, I mean, that's the one thing. I mean, I've heard dumb tricks before, but there was one of the things that Well, I mean, it's the Red Bull guys. They're all crazy. It was a huge battle. Chad and Rachel virtually. Virtually, virtually. virtually. <laughs> virtually yeah. yeah. It is so nice. So you're nice Chad. To you. Chad. It's great to meet you. Which, you, know, you, Susan, great to see you. Yeah. Yeah. Nice, nice to meet you. Yeah. 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 So. Pause. We're in the middle of the financials. Oh, great. These are some good news you. for you. Rob needed to grab some was pizza behind you and then paperwork in front of you. Um, and Rob grabbed the Edward Jones numbers to see just how the market oh, has. My a message about some of the fiber board meeting. They are, they are, there is the reason that's big news for Vermont is there's a hundred thousand dollars in interest payments going out of the state. And uh, I mean, a hundred million dollars in interest payments, actually 98 by my calculation. So that, um, and you're going to that after this? It's got to be virtual. Okay. But what you may hear me do is sit there with us in one ear. And okay. Kind of so, yeah, we'll let you grab your pizza, on. but you're up to speed on, we are on uh, uh, financials. Okay. Yep. Uh, our treasurer reported out, and Rob is now moving into the. Well, uh, Mike has the document, so Michael will oh, handle the bad news. Rob, he Rob, actually Rob, Rob, he Rob, actually Rob, anticipated the bad news. There's so bad news in addition to you. Uh -oh. Yeah, Rob handed me the. Uh, the uh, Rob, you monthly Edward Jones report. Um, now, uh, this year, we're starting with January. Not sure you remember, but January was actually pretty good for the old stock market. I think January was, well, that was when we changed presidents. <laughs> um, at the beginning of the year, we had $3,324,000. $324,000. Now we have 312000 
So the same thing that has hit everybody else has also hit us. Mm -hmm. This is not terrible news. That is not a terrible loss. We will be able to make that money up if the market begins to rise again. And it all has gone up. That was 324 down to 312? That's right. We lost $12,000. Now, we haven't lost that money yet because we haven't sold that. Or we may be losing money that I don't know about. Is it? Uh, I think we started drawing off this account. So not now. For some, we're, we're not drawing any. Not now. Right now. We should be okay. We budgeted for that potentiality. However, however, there's enough in the savings account for us to I anticipate to go a year before we actually went into the reserves. So we've been conservative in our in our budgets to the point where. We actually have a pretty good amount in the savings. You know, we get a quarterly check from Comcast. And in 2018, I think is when we got, we saw the, the significant decrease in the, in the month because of accounting change. And at that point, we were getting close to no cash when to, to finish out the quarter. And I think it even one time we had to go get $10,000 to cover mm -hmm. before the check came. But in the subsequent years, with the move up here and the and, yeah, and cutting the, the staff people, um, cost um, reduction, we were able to get it up. So to the point right now where I think you know, as Michael was saying, we have about one hundred and seventy thousand in our savings account, and we are getting close to another check coming from Comcast. I think if it comes back, first quarter check would become probably in May, in the middle of May. So that's not bad. We're not on fumes at that point. And I think we can probably go, if we were going to delete that, you know, it would go for quite some time before we even had to go into reserves. So Mike, when it's down 12,000, uh, does Edward Jones keep track of what stock it was that took us down that far? Uh, if you want to get into the week. No, I don't. I just was <laughs> curious. Uh, the well, answer to your question is yes. But you don't ask. Uh, but you know, uh, you don't. You don't it's look not, like you don't look like the sort of person. That, you need to be an accountant. No, no, I understand. To, just, to get to get. I was just curious to know what stake you down. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I mean, this is this is like a blip in the stock market. Right now, right now, if you if you want to buy stocks, this might be a good time to good time to look at it. Of course, then again, they could go down further. What did Nasdaq go down five hundred points or something? Anyway, today it was, was eight hundred. Yeah, five five hundred and eight hundred is becoming commonplace. I do remember when five hundred was a disaster. Yeah, mm -hmm. so much. But the difference it. here is this: is the dollar itself still as well? You know, well, the difference is, mm -hmm. is that when five hundred was a disaster, the stock market, the, the Dow Jones was twelve thousand. It's now. Mm -hmm. It has been as high as 36 mm. and pretty close to 37. That was back in January. It's now 32. But the, the, the question from a fundamental standpoint is whether the US dollar is gonna remain the reference currency. Well, hopefully it will. I certainly hope so too, because uh, I don't want to be I think the next thing that we looking at, the next, oh, yes. the next thing that we're looking at for those of you who might choose to speculate with your own money, uh, Bitcoin on cryptocurrency. Yeah. <laughs> don't figure that's right. right. I'm I'm here. Here. No <laughs> government <laughs> controls them. Yeah. I, great segue. <laughs> Our new source of income. The state government. Could you walk us through check number one, check number two, and how that impacts our finance? I was just going to say, so on my desk is the check that I received from the state of Vermont for $12,500. And this is the uh, budget adjustment request that we made at the beginning of this legislative session. And this is, um, we have been going through a uh, van to the state, state house. And uh, first of all, to you know, educate them about the fact that the, these cable revenues will it, we anticipate will start going down. And there are some indications that that's the case, you know, uh, depending on where you look at in, in Vermont, for instance, Burlington is seeing a, a significant 5% decrease uh, and probably due to the fact that broadband is pretty available in, in Burlington. It may not, so it will lag in some of the more rural areas where people still are relying on cable. Um, so for instance, I think uh, Orca is pretty flatlined. You know, when I keep a look on the quarterly checks, we're, we're you know, we're pretty, uh, Flatline, but 
you know, who knows when that will change. We'll, we'll keep an eye on the quarterly. So um, in looking at um, how to go to the legislature, the idea is that there needs to be some policy change around telecommunications and funding for community media, mm -hmm. which is a very robust discussion, which will need to be taking place. But until then, we're, we went to them and said, for three years, let's do some bridge funding. So each year we'll come back to them. Uh, the first was then a budget adjustment for 300000 Currently, we're hoping the $600,000 that we're asking for will sit tight in committee right now. They're trying to get out of the session by, by the end of next week. And the uh, advocate that we hired, Action Circles, is like, we hope that we are not in the discussion because we're sitting in there. And so hopefully nobody will bring up our name and we will see the $600,000 go through. Um, Van is trying to figure out how to equitably distribute that funding. Um, based on, you know, can we bring in a formula which says, you know, you're, you're seeing a decline in your revenue, cable revenue, so therefore this money should go to you. Uh, the first $300,000 that was, you know, after we went through and tried to come up with a formula, it really was decided to just kind of split it evenly amongst the 24 access centers. And uh, the benefit of that is, regardless of loss. right, so a smaller access center like the Hardwick or Windsor, that money will be significant to them and will help them so and the larger access centers it's not as big of a, of a thing so we the, the, the sort of inherent in the way that you know the, the budgets was that this will help the smaller centers and you know it's not done on a progressive scale it's done everybody gets the last thing but they are sort of grappling with how do we come up with a formula that sort of addresses the people who are feeling the hurt more than the other people are seeing do you decrease. expect that conversation to come up may 6th uh i don't think so i think that's you know that that um I think that's that'll help. It, you know, it could, but I don't really think so. I think you know, at that point, we'll either know that we've got the six hundred thousand, and then Van will get into a discussion this summer as to how do we distribute that amongst the access centers. Okay, thanks. Other financial <clears throat> stuff for you guys to know is that the uh, nine ninety has been filed for twenty twenty one, which was surprisingly early. In prior years, uh, the accountant that we use, MGV Associates in Colchester has often filed for an extension and we typically uh, could get two, three month extensions for nothing. Or maybe it was like, Evan was telling me, we just filed for a six month extension. Um, but for some reason it showed up on my desk in February and I was like, Evan, why is the tax return here done? He's like, we're, we're getting it done early this year. I'm like, great. All right. So um, the, 2020, the 2020 was filed in November and then I just filed the, the 2021 <laughs> tax return to 990. So that's all taken care of. And I could get you a copy or if anybody wants to see a copy of the tax return, let me know. I can get that to you. Mm -hmm. Any surprises? Actually, no. uh, you might be able to help me with a problem that I've got with the Montpelier Historical Society. Yeah. Uh, they're trying to uh, become a 501c3. C3. And uh, so they've got a question. They, they, you get the 990, and then you get the document that actually makes you. Apparently, we run into a catch 22. Apparently, you can't submit one unless the other is already there. Yeah, you get your letter of determination first before you get your letter of determination. Mm -hmm. Before you get your 990. If, if I. If I could give your telephone number, say to the current president of the Vermont sure. Historic Society, you might like to get a little advice from. Him. Sure, mm -hmm. yeah. happy to do that. And if I could get a copy, because I'm the head of another 501c3 with its letter of determination, but it's its first year of tax filing. You're saying you'd like a copy of the tax return of 990? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because then I can shoot it over to our treasurer who sure. was like, oh, I've done these before. And then I'm like, so anyways, not related to Orca, but no. thank you. And to your question, Dave, no surprises. It's a very simple one. We're good. We're a nonprofit, so there's no taxes at all. No surprise. Yep. We don't have any funny stuff with different subsidies or anything like that. So and the donation that I see here, we just had one five hundred dollar donation and the rest was grants and interest and dividend. Yeah. Uh the donation, five hundred donation. Mm -hmm. I don't recall what that one It's uh forty ninety. The I see it on the list. Down. I just don't care, but recall mm. where it came from. But, um, um, are we going to have any trouble because our donations are much smaller than our capital gains and interest and dividend income? 
uh, um, we've state. never had any trouble in the past. I mean, if we first filed, uh, when you filed the, the 1023 for, for your tax exempt status, mm -hmm. it is a bit of an anomaly to see a, a, a 501c3 have basically just one source mm -hmm. of uh, income. So you have to sort of explain, here's the unique situation. We get a big check from the contract. It's not actually, you could look at it as a lot of little checks from mm -hmm. cable subscribers, you know, mm -hmm. two or three dollars from here and there. That is funneled through us somehow, but they you know, really the check is cut by Comcast Corporation. Yep. So you, there is a little bit of an explanation as to why mm -hmm. uh, that. But so I think that may get to some of the solution that you're trying to get mm -hmm. to. Yeah. Things I've never thought of is is um, legally the Comcast mm -hmm. check to us considered a donation, and can is that are they writing that off? I don't think side? that's a donation. I think not they have to it's a franchise fee. It's a franchise fee. That's the language. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, other conversation about uh, financials. The last thing I would say is that with my departure, the credit card, which is tied to my social security number, will be going away. So I've been talking to staff about how that is. So we also get need to make sure that the signers on the accounts are all set up, which I think um, most of the accounts are Michael and Rachel and I. Um, but I was going to uh, counsel on adding Mike mm -hmm. the chair as well. Uh, and then when you do get to a new executive director, you'd have to go through that all again <clears throat> to get it going. Right. And uh, in, in speaking with Jim, there's there's talk of good comfort among staff with um, if needing a transition or an interim period, they're willing to, they would rather wait for the right person than jump on someone before the day you leave. Yeah. So I don't know if consideration of maybe a, a staff member in that period would also be able to sign or is that just that's getting too into the weeds i don't think that's necessary. i mean christopher already has it on the use documentary lab so there's you know there's some precedent for the fact that he has access to one of the accounts. okay he doesn't have access to the big accounts i mean he has just that funds right, there right. it's for the youth documentary lab um the thing that you know i'm getting rid of the credit card but there are debit cards that can be tied to the checking accounts and you know currently i have one that's in my name i don't think it's just tied to my social security number as the credit card is so uh, that can sit there for a while i don't think there's any problem with it sitting there uh until there's a new director but obviously if you if you prefer to get another debit card and you know if you get you on as a signer and you want to get one in your name that's also a potential for that as well so handy or essential in terms of the running of the place being able to have that plastic card um so A lot of bills I have tied to the credit card. So like the insurance, so it's, you know, it's really just, a, you know. Yeah, it's, um, it's an easy. I go somewhere between handy and essential. There's okay. something in between gray area. Okay. Certainly very handy. Uh, and um, staff, I'm, I told them, if you have any major purchases that you want to do for equipment beforehand, then this would be the time, to, you know, while my credit card's still there. But it will. You've got to. Text messages. You gotta drive somebody. Uh, there are people. You're waiting a call, aren't you? No, no, I got the person. Oh, you got that home. figured out. I Great. thought I was all clear. So it, it may be a motion to add Michael to the. You know, sometimes I've in when I've done signers signature cards, like the thing they either. It, the story seems to change every time I ask. Sometimes it's just something on the letterhead. Sometimes they want to see minutes where there's been a motion to add it. So I think just to be clean, you know, you may want to make a motion to add uh, signers on the account to. Remove move me and add Michael. Effective a certain date? Yeah. I mean, I don't know if it has to be an effective certain date. You know, I think just a, a motion to who the signers should be. So, I mean, if it's, um, you know, on, it, we can leave Christopher on the documentary lab, but the other ones, it could be uh, Mike, uh, Rachel, and you. So that would probably be the motion. Okay. And I can't make it as... Chair, so I think props fishing for a motion. So moved. And is there a second to uh, clean up the signatories? I'll, I'll second. And Mike uh, has seconded. All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 And opposed. That's uh, unanimous. Um, got some business done within the financials. More to do, or could entertain a motion to accept the financials. 
I'll move to accept the financial. Mike Doyle has so moved. Second. And Rachel Lamb has seconded. Um, all those in favor of accepting the treasurer and financial reports, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. Uh, and opposed. That also carries unanimously, leading us to the final Rob Chapman Memorial Executive <laughs> Director's <Memorial> Report. They're <laughs> <laughs> not dead yet. Just <laughs> <over> Massachusetts. We <laughs> aren't dead yet. How long are you still here? Is there a date? So uh, the first week of May will be my last full week here, which is next week. Which is next week. On the 9th, I'll do a Monday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday in Beverly and come back for a Thursday, Friday to help with the transition. And I'll do that again the week after that. And then the week of the 23rd is when I am full time down there. That does not mean that I'm not available for a phone call. Um, can you explain how to invoice something like that? Uh, if you get stuck. Uh, and I was just thinking tonight on the way over here, I said, well, one thing for Rob to go, but you know, all around the freaking state, you know, everybody knows that he's the director of us. And so maybe we should hide the fact that you've left so that uh, nobody thinks <laughs> oh, that you're leader, leaderless. And, I think and the door's already open. Plan. Okay. <laughs> Here I am. Well, actually, I was, I was thinking similar but different just in meeting with Jen. Uh, she expressed staff good level of confidence that they could carry out the day-to-days and just is that an accurate assessment you echo that or are there areas where like oh that's going to be the tricky um i i would echo that uh there are some areas that i would say need some attention you know certainly um who's going to have access to the quickbooks who's who would take care of you know paying the bills and stuff like that so um I think Jen's online to do payroll. So yep. um, I think Christopher would like to learn how to be able to do that. So I was thinking if anybody, it might be him. I don't know if that gives him an op on the director or set or anything like that, but he's certainly um, very interested in the budgeting and keeping track of that and invoicing because some of the you know, money that we're bringing in has to be invoiced. And so, right. um, but other than that, it's a pretty short list of sorting left. Yeah. That's about. Well, somebody needs the big picture, the van connection that. Uh, and Christopher helps with that because he is the project coordinator for van. So he does have a lot of ties to van. So he, mm. I think, is capable of, of keeping up on that. Jen and, and Zach tend to be sort of reluctant on that front. Yeah. So of, of, of uh, interacting with the other access centers. Um, so I think that Christopher, as a community engagement manager, does have the 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 wherewithal and in the, in the capacity to be able to maintain that. Um, so Michael's been involved in some advanced stuff in the, in the past, so I, you know, it's certainly, and you guys are, some of you will be coming to see them on Friday, next Friday, so. Okay, so the week that they're here, the band's here. Yep. Will be a week that you were doing some things here and some No, that'll things. be the last full week. Mm -hmm. So you'll Friday be on your hand. last full week. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So we should dress you up with all the gear that we've got. <laughs> I'll be wearing my orchestra stuff and you know, my hat. Okay, and... I just I don't want you taking your golden parachute leaving from Massachusetts. No, 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 no. <laughs> but there is something that is on the horizon that you guys need to think about, which is the Orca annual meeting that never was held. Which always used to be in the spring, but COVID moved it to being like the virtual PowerPoint in the fall, <clears> which I probably makes sense to maintain that date but make it live well so the bylaws actually state that it should be in may unless there's a motion by the board to do it at some other time i, I would like love to see an open house with the new executive director so yeah uh, so you might want to just make a motion to okay. hold up now have we appointed a new executive director yet are we about to here's where we are thank you i've got um uh, two board member volunteers, thank you so much. The hiring committee is formed, Jen, myself, Chad, and Sue. We've got two resumes in. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll create an email thread for brainstorming questions. Uh, maybe have one remote kind of 
powwow prior to interview number one. And I've given um, all members of the hiring committee now have the two resumes and the staff's um, kind of vision input, the staff met and kind of where do we want this organization to go? How do we want the culture to be? So hiring committee members all have that in hand and uh, so we've got clear next steps. I mean, <clears throat> what are our ethical and moral standards in terms of the search? We, are we capable of stealing someone that we want from oh, another band course. group that's coming here? <laughs> Oh, well, that's right. Van's going to be here. I was just thinking that I had on the opportunity. Or should we go in executive mm -hmm. session? <laughs> no, that's actually a good thought. I mean, getting the I I getting the word out is key, and I, it feels like oh, geez, only two resumes, but it's early. We still haven't got our first seven days add in yet. Um, but the van community is aware. Like you threw it into the listserv. Do um, you want to just do a here's here's where we spread the news that we're looking for somebody. Yeah, so it's uh, it's the front thing on our website. Uh, it's gone out on our social media. Uh, I've listed on LinkedIn. It's gone into seven days. Seven days is actually, it's online in seven days. It just hasn't gone to the print. It will be in the next two print editions of seven days. I've listed it with Common Good Vermont, which is sort of the nonprofit association in Vermont. I've posted it to the ACN Northeast um, uh, um, Facebook page, uh, which I have access to. Uh, so, and then there's a, where do we also, we're looking at indeed.com. Okay. Uh, yeah. And any any other suggestions labor. people want to throw a Rob, we just get mm -hmm. the word out. Front porch forum. Front porch forum is difficult in that it's so targeted, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's like, I, I can list here in Montpelier, but I can't list in anywhere else. In so I mean, well, well, you have board members. right. So yeah. I, I can send you guys all a link and say, you know, uh, here's, you know, here's the link to the website and basically it's the front page of yeah. Just in case we happen to have a local candidate. Yeah. 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 Going back to my ethical, moral questions. Um, is there, I think it's uh, appropriate for the rights of your privacy to uh, indicate that you found another position. Yes. And that you're not, leaving because we're throwing you out. <laughs> no, I'm just saying that a lot of times people want to know why is there an opening in this field? Mm -hmm. yeah. Is it is a job too big at this point for one person to do? Is is there is the person at a point where they've had an argument with their board and they're left over it? I mean, I don't I don't think we can answer that in a job search, but there might be a few things that could hint that you went on with your career into an area that was something very attractive. I mean, in the social media post does say opening. that Rob is going on to BevCam. He's accepted a position as the executive. Okay, all right. I just wanted to make sure yeah. that it was clear. So I think that, that would probably take care of what you're talking about. Okay. That, you know, it's not the fact that Rob is being hauled off to jail for embezzlement or anything like that. Or <laughs> just haven't or, found out yet. As far as you guys know, so it's less across the state lines. <laughs> Is it, is it a, just an open-ended search, or is there a application accepted until a closed date? Uh, I think we left it open until yeah. filled. And, and staff right. is saying we don't mind the, the long goodbye. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, Taking even time. after you're gone. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and actually, Jen and I talked about sort of that that period of time being like the tr we were we're in a transition plan, and that rolls right into a strategic plan, so that we're launching something we've kind of always talked about but it seems like with a new director to just kind of say hey look we built this on-ramp this transition plan you are now tasked with and of course we're all here to help you build it but yeah. we, we need a strategic plan and and I will say that else. you know I've <laughs> seen a number of strategic plans that just kind of go down a hole because they weren't shepherded by somebody. So I think if you uh, take the time to find a consultant to work with, one of the best examples I had of, of the, was when I worked with Stephanie Mahar, who is here in Montpelier, when I was at VCAM, and she went through a community needs assessment where they brought people in from the community and it was a very robust, well-informed document that's provided with us to be able to make, do that. So uh, if you go down that road, and maybe the new executive director may have experience with it, but I've, I've often sometimes found Strategic planning just means, oh, we're going to have a retreat and nothing comes of it. So it's, it's, it is a process that really 
does warrant some consideration and possibly bringing in outside help to you know to yeah. allocate some funds for that. And there may be the decision we face, but then you implement it. That's that seems to be where a lot of organizations get stuck. Yeah, and trying to come up with metrics is always something where I'm like, how do we tell if we if we're meeting our metrics and, and actually doing the work, you know, in in the community media environment, what does that look like? How do you say we have met our goals with this particular metric or something like that? And that is that an increase in programming? Is that an increase in people coming through the, the, the building or gone through some programs? What does that look like? And you know, so it, um, I, I mean, I'm just saying that I don't often have the answers to that. So it's just a, something that I would uh, appreciate guidance with and you know, allocating some funds to, to be able to be shepherded through that. And as I said, it was the most uh, rewarding was when we actually did hire uh, Stephanie Lahar and her partner Nancy Wasserman, who really just knew the stuff and were able to sort of shape it in a way that really felt it got somewhere and got to the something. And actually, I, I just pulled that community needs assessment and shared it with staff. And uh, so, if you guys, anybody wants to see the one that we did with uh, VCAM in 2008, 2009. Um, so like an example of what the product would look like. So do we need to make a motion about postponing um, the May Thanks for picking that requirement? Up. You, you can um, turn that into a motion. And uh, that we have decided to leave it within reason and, and timeliness of finding a new director to have an annual meeting as soon as the new director is settled in enough to be part of it. All second. Uh, that was yeah, well spoken and already seconded. Um, um, could I amend it and say we'd like to include Naming the uh, John Block Studio officially as, at that yeah, time. Yeah, at that as part of a ceremony as part of that open. Yeah. We have yet to have our open house due to moving here in February of 2020. We have yet to in invite the public in to, to a true open house. It's just to that point, um, the annual meeting it so doesn't have a lot of business to... that we have to conduct. There's no election of officers or, I mean, Actually, an election of directors, there is uh, an organizational meeting that takes place after the annual meeting where officers are supposed to be yeah. out for re election. And that's fallen into the fall of the last two years. Yes. Yeah. But it's, because there it's isn't a lot of pandemic. Right. Yeah. You know, I'm just the yeah. oddity of it all <laughs> moving here February 2020. But because there hasn't been really a lot of business that takes place at the annual meeting, I and mean, sometimes we've completed reports and you tried to come up, you know, I think the first couple of years I had some pretty glossy, nice reports that were done and mailed them out, but it didn't get a lot of. It was a rather large expense that didn't yeah. to get a lot of back. So sometimes it'll be just like one sheet with some numbers saying this is how many new programs we had. Uh, just trying to throw some information for people. But really, it, we looked at it as an opportunity to sort of have it as an open house and try to bring people in. So, you know, it was a, uh, oftentimes it turned into a bit of a, you know, some food for the people who typically are the staff and, and the uh, regular producers and board members. Uh, but, you know, Sometimes we've tried to do it live on the air and present reports. So well, in the old days, John used to have it out on the lawn and then yeah. here, yeah, across the street. So I mean, that's something for you guys to consider. It's not and showcasing the space, which just doesn't feel new anymore. But, but that's why you know it, it, we. I even built it as the annual meeting slash open house, so that you right. know it was an opportunity to, to bring people in, talk about what Orca does, <laughs> and try to get some interest in it. And sometimes it's been not many people. And sometimes it's been a little bit better. I mean, okay. You've had some. Dignitaries we've invited, I think, Steve Pappas came one time and spoke for a little bit. Uh, if you get, you know, it might be worth, you know, trying to get some people like the governor to, to come in and say a few things. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for that motion, Dave, to buy us that room. Um, other executive director report you'd like to direct us towards? So that's the staffing was obviously I mean, should we vote on the on the motion. And then meeting. Yeah, yeah, certainly we can keep that conversation going. See, so you have a thought or two to that? No, no, I just, I mean, I think we have finished that subject before we. We vote on it yet? We haven't voted on the motion. Yet. Yeah. Oh, you're right. And yeah. seconded. And I yeah. acknowledge, yeah. thank you. And I've never voted on it. Thank you. Um, I didn't sleep well last night. I got 20 excuses for it. But all those in favor of um, uh, postponing our annual meeting open house uh, beyond the May date uh, so our new executive director can settle in. Fair capturing? Yep. Please indicate by saying aye. 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 And opposed? Uh, that passes unanimously. Thank you, Sue. Good catch. Um, and uh, back to our executive <laughs> director, swan song report. Yeah, so I mean, obviously, it's, uh, it's a transitional time. Um, 
I don't know. I mean, I, I some of the committee members on the hiring committee have asked for some input. Michael and I have been talking about, you know, exit interviews, you know, what can I pass to the new executive director of information? Uh, you know, whether it's a written form uh, or it's just accessibility when they get here for them to be able to call me up and talk to me about how did you do this? Uh, staff and I have been obviously having many conversations about the transition. Um, but, you know, uh, it's been a wonderful 10 years <laughs> at Orc Media. Uh, uh, you know, I think I posted something on social media or asked Chris Ratcher for me for a quote uh, about it. And I, you know, part of it was the, the actually, and so um, my daughter's mom, I posted something about how the young women that my daughters have grown up to be in this community has been such a big part of what that is, you know? And so when I realized that when I got here in 2011, they were in second and fifth grade and now they're, turning 18, 21, and they're these amazing young women that I think in no small part is due to the community that embraced us, the family, and took us in, and um, the organization, part of it, you know, one of the benefits of being in the job that I have is you're almost immediately into the community, you know, I think the first time I took an executive director job was when I moved to California, uh, and took a job at um, the Access Center in Monrovia, California, and immediately, you know, uh, you know, people know, you know, because of the job, you're involved in the community, so it's already happening in Beverly, Massachusetts. So um, it's been, uh, you know, first of all, having grown up at Stowe, being back up in the mountains of Vermont, and you know, after having spent some time in the Champlain Valley or in California. Um, so it's been uh, great that they've had that opportunity to grow up in such a, a small community. Montpelier High School is great. Uh, Orca Media has been great. They all talk about how they have so many kids who know who their dad is because he's the orc media guy or that they, you know, they came through and they said, I saw your dad, you know. Um, so how many miles is it from here to Beverly? Three hours drive. So what is that? That's probably- 240 like, miles or something? It's just, it's just, Boston, right? just north of uh, Boston, probably, you know, 40 minutes north of Boston on the coast. On 93. No, no, it's, a, it's further. You have to cut over on 95 and then you can go read further. North of the state. I don't want to right know where you are, state. you know, we want to spy on this. Well, I hope that people will come and visit, and, you know, <laughs> I'm going to try to learn to like fish and seafood. I don't have never <laughs> liked this. I was actually Googling, how does somebody who hates fish learn to like to eat it? <laughs> well, you drink a lot of lobster fisk. I guess. Yeah, it's, it's, it. it's, 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 it's like good. the white fish or something like that. And then so they were the fish talkers, and I was talking with this with my mother, who's in Florida. And she's like, I've never liked fish. I can't get past my nose. And I'm like, I know how you are. Mom. So uh, it was just funny to see what sort of suggestions. Fish tacos was a big one. They're like, you know, just bury it. Although I was in Cancun once and did have fresh fish. And they, the fresher the fish, it is the mm -hmm. easier it is to get past your nose. Yeah, it doesn't smell. And had it doesn't have a strong smell. It's yeah. uh, legal seafood there in, on the waterfront there in Boston. Right, right there, yeah, in Boston, the south side. I'd actually be down there this Thursday. Yeah. So uh, it's, it seems like a great community. Um, I, you know, it's uh, I, when I was doing the interview and telling them how much we actually produce here at Orca, you know, and the, the amount of content that comes through in the 14 towns that we served, their jaws kind of dropped. It's like, how do you, how do you do that? And I'm like, well, it's a lot of the, you know, uh, Jim and Zach who are busting their butts uh, every day and part-time people that are coming into edit. Uh, and it is a lot of communities. And so, It'll be interesting for me to shift. There's a lot of sports. I haven't done a lot of sports since I was at the California job. Yeah. So that's, you know, and the access center is actually located in the high school. Oh. So um, it's a very small studio. So I'm like, you know, but I am looking forward to getting to know the North shore. I'm looking forward to having the accessibility of the Boston city of Boston. Yeah. I've often said that I, I will never live anywhere near Boston because I hate Boston, <laughs> but I've tried to shift that now. I've been, nice. Well, it's funny because I, when I was in uh, high school, my girlfriend and I would talk about she loved L.A. and I loved New York. And I'm like, oh, L.A. sucks. I, I will only live in New York. <laughs> and Boston was another part where I was like, nah, Boston, Montreal is right there. So and it's funny that I will now have lived in L.A. and now in Boston and never <laughs> lived in New York or Montreal. So, um, But, yeah, I'm looking forward to having a major city uh, and the availability uh, that you have with the arts and culture and diversity that are there. Um, but, uh, and, but of course, Vermont will always be in my heart, you know, it's like where I grew up, it's where my kids grew up and, uh, yeah, there'll be no problem. I mean, as compared to when I moved to California, I mean, I'm, that I'm three hours away and 
my daughters will be here this summer. So I, I do expect to be up here quite a bit. You know, to well, good. Time. And I would like to say that there's some major things that you've accomplished in your 10 years, but just a couple of them were moving the studio from downtown to up here, which was a big job and um, making the connection with the legislature, which sort of put us on the map across the state. You know, those were really good connections. I love the neighborhood, we're right beside the bridge. Yeah. There's oh yeah, this common is, cause. This is, mm -hmm. it's been all pluses standing up here. Um, and thank you for executing that because there was a ton of moving parts, you know, from idea to action. Is uh, that's tricky to do. And when you were you were talking about your daughters, kind of from pre adolescence to like functional young adults, that's kind of where you you brought um, Orca as well. I mean, we the the amount of production we crank here as just a matter of course is uh, it's it's I think it's unmatched. So um, you've taken us to a plateau, and I do I think Sue articulating really well that we hope you kind of. Uh, on your way out the door, uh, share what you would see our next our next uh, big plateau. What it would what it would look like. Yeah, I you know I um, you mentioned that earlier. I was like, oh, you know, what would I say? You know, as far as like Michael, I think you asked. You know, where are the things that are sort of left hanging? And I do think some strategic planning. I, you know, it's, it's, uh, there's an obvious um, place for that, and that community needs this. System. But hearing from the community and, and building on the connections that you have. Uh, I, you know, I think that Christopher's doing a lot of really good work with the, the grant that he's applied for with the, the Vermont Arts Council. Thanks, Chad. In all of power, if we didn't know about it, we wouldn't even be in the running. <laughs> um, out there with the kids, you know, that's that's a great thing, building on that, that work that we've done. Um, you know, the, the website is sort of a project that, that I think that we, um, Jim's shepherding through. I think that this, that's an area where I'd like to see that the work with localize and the web form. You know, the, the website now is better than Beth Cams. I'll say that right now. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, there, the searchability and the ability to get to it, the stuff that's on it, I think it really is the one place where it needs to be. And it can be more dynamic uh, uh, information on there and stuff like that. Uh, the facilities also have some work to be done. You know, I have a half built set here that's mm -hmm. behind that um, needs some work to be done on that uh, and being able to capitalize and getting people in here using the facility. You know, I had ideas of like, you know, doing a live music show here for Friday nights where people would come from live from the John Block studio. We have, uh, you know, the, the local band finding out. Yeah, interacting with residencies. I know you yeah. could really imagine a lively. That's the, the partnership with BCFA was something that just kind of fell through the cracks with the pandemic hit, where we all went away. So um, the libraries that we, we've been talking about for some time and just connect, creating that connection with Waterbury and with Randolph. Uh, I do think that the uh, the proudest thing is that the, the connection with the state house, you know, that sort of is something that I really looked at. You're going to miss that. I am. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's it's uh, been, um, is it's big fish, small pond syndrome or. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll be talking to Mayor Beverly, I guess, not, not the yeah, governor from the state of Vermont. So. I makes more for Scott. But it was uh, something that I re remember looking at when I was looking at the job, taking, uh, applying for the job at Work Media, uh, and knowing that, that I didn't think that they were capitalizing on that state house in their footprint as well as they could be. And so uh, getting us in there and getting people, the legislators, understanding what we do uh, has really come to fruition, particularly now with the work that, you know, Action Circles and seeing them actually come through with money for supporting it and recognizing the benefit. And sometimes that's, you know, when I do talk to them, every one of them sees Orca in the committee rooms when they really were in the committee rooms. And so that presence uh, really paid a lot of dividends, I think. And so, Is there a possibility that there's a way uh, without, it, you know, taking a huge, huge amount of time to actually have a print of all the things that are archived here? I think it's another area that, that um, I think that uh, the inventory of the content is really something that, that I think is not really where I'd like to see it at as a you know, massive job. Yeah. I know it's massive, but it, it's it's massive if you're told that, that you can find this and and, yeah. and, and no, then they find it for you. Too, but yes. I would love to know, I mean, you know, I, I get that's what's happening at uh, 
to Burlington, you know, is that there be VPRs running things like the early days of Banjo Dan, you know, and they have a half hour concert. Mm -hmm. And it's really nice to see it coming across uh, on the com my own Comcast. So there's, there's, I mean, we, I think we've gotten rid of all the tapes and maybe some DVDs and stuff like that. So we digitized most of all the tapes, yeah. but um, taking those files and cataloging them, it's really, and even attaching metadata to them so you can be able to make them searchable. Okay. It would be huge. I was thinking well, it's a the platform is it's really where I'm wondering at, you know, there's, you know, where, if you're going to wrap it into metadata, what's going to be consistent throughout the future of, of uh, video data? You know, how do you have searchable content if you're looking for everything that we have that Bert has Bernie Sanders in it, you know? Yeah. We, you know, it's, um, it, you know, there's the file name and, and Jim can take you through all of this. There's, yeah. There's, you know, she's a sister surgeon, so she, mm -hmm. she can, um, talk about um, the wrappers that you have in the metadata that are associated with the actual content and, stuff like that, and what um, platform and it's all seems to be proprietary and, and Chad may know a little bit about the PBS um, PB core or anything like that. Yeah. No, I don't, I don't know much about it. This was one thing that did seem to be the, the, the sort of uh, template for people that would adopt it is from or public rock PBS, their PB core metadata, but that was something I remember talking about six or seven years ago and yeah, I yeah. about it since. Okay. Now, you know, it's whether it's YouTube or how do you attach searchable data to, to video content is, is sort of a perplexing thing. Yeah, it is. Anyway. Yeah. But you have a great person in Jim who is a, you know, a data person. Okay. Who, and, and technically minded could probably solve that problem. So. I worked with digital preservation when I worked at the Vermont State Archives, and there's a, there's a there's some good resources both at the state and at some of the academic settings that might be worth talking to. Too. Uh, We're going to yeah. talk about moving into that area, but it is labor intensive mm -hmm. and expensive no matter what you do. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. And didn't they just do a uh, the BTIF and some people did a Vermont uh, Film Archive um, mm -hmm. that is is. I think it's up. I don't know how searchable, but they definitely, they actually may be trying to do more of that. I know that they well, also, also the whole around. Made Here series that's on public television mm -hmm. of all the movies that are made, that have been made here. Um, and then that even moves into distribution. Are you being able to look and, and have people on their Roku or their Apple TV and over the top? So that's an area where everybody's trying to think about is just where do we move to distribution? That is, you know, people be able to search with whatever their mechanism is that they're looking at. So, mm -hmm. I sounds like a lot of work. Well, yeah. Good luck with all that, guys. As, yeah. as we <laughs> won the battle to get on the channel guide, it's like a brand new world, anyways. It's kind of, and even then, the channel guide, you know, having descriptions that are associated with that, you know, that's something that many access centers are not used to doing. They just play it on the channel, and then if that's what it is. It comes up on the actual content itself. Today's thing, but when you're and when you have it listing in the electronic programming guide, there's data that's going to be populated that's associated with a field of description or an episode or a title. Those are all things that have to be going in. And when you get into access producers, are we writing it for them or are they writing it for themselves? You know, and if they are writing it for themselves, do we have standards that are approved? Or something right. like that? You know, if it's somebody who's particularly um, uh, controversial or something like that, you know, are we are we trying to say even to the discussion of like, is it a you know, this is something that we've talked about with staff is that an access producer program is different than one of that's uh, what we, you know, I typically call an Orca Media production with the idea that the production is you have control over the content with an access producer, you're not supposed to have control over the content. So there, that would be an Orca Media presentation in my mind. Mm -hmm. Productions like 4th of July. Yeah. And, and the city council meetings and the yeah. state house, but it's not, um, you know, Controversial program that might come in. Right. We're not yeah. endorsing any viewpoints under those circumstances. Right. So, how do you differentiate between that? And even do you make brand, different branding elements that would differentiate between that? I mean, um, so, all of your kind of sharing of this knowledge around this set of uh, issues, new executive director, how conversant do they need to be in this world of metadata and, or the staff? I think, I think you have some good staff there that can do it, you know, and like I said, Jen is a data person who can and really sort of get, you can get behind it and, and utilize her for that. So, you know, if she's, you know, has a director who says, can you can come up with a recommendation on how do we do this, then I think that's really where you're at. You know, yes. I don't know that you have to get into the nuts and bolts of it, but you do have a good, committed and talented 
staff. So she could do the channel to... guide. She knows what, how to do that. Yeah. Yeah, she's doing it now, as a matter of fact. I mean, it's oh. part of it. I mean, it does come in. I mean, she she is somebody who can get too far into the weeds. Yeah. So you know, she may need to be pulled back or something like that. But, you know, they're, they're certainly um, she's quite capable of anything like that. Yeah. Part of what I was hearing from the people at uh, BPR and PBS last weekend in regards to the state house was that they were concerned not only with the quality of feeds that might be coming out if if the um, state was going to be wiring um, streams up themselves, but also the archiving and the preservation of this was a really big concern and the transparency of that and searchability of it. So. It would be might be worth it to figure out okay how you know uh, get on the same uh, yeah. page with them uh, or as part of the same effort even I, I don't know if, if that's going on but whatever method they're uh, going to be categorizing so it. we're not we're not an island here in Vermont the access other access centers are dealing with it as well so um, keeping those connections open to the Vermont Access Network is there a legislative committee in charge there of that is, field? Is, that's a good question. Uh, or it could be the sergeant at arms, the staff. It might be the staff and not a committee. I'm sure it might be just the legislative com committee, isn't there? I just think, them? you know, given the world that we're in right now, uh, we need to have the legislature looking, you know, how to preserve the record of its own actions. Mm -hmm. Government operations is the committee that that's the that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I've looked at, you know, when I've done some work on Vermont access, I've looked at what other states are doing. Uh, and, you know, most of the other states actually do have um, feeds, video feeds from the state house. Um, we don't have from the, the main chambers, we do, uh, Orca really chose to focus on the committees and not actually doing like gavel gavel in the, in the house and the Senate for one thing, because their schedule is so up in the air. You know, I, I think at one point I was trying to listen to BPR's feed from the state house and I'd go every time I tune in, there was nothing there. And then one time I happened to catch it as they were gaveling in, I'm like, oh, there's actually something coming from the state house. But you never know when, you know, it's, it's a catch all. It's really at the whim of the chairs of the committees. I mean, they can change on the, on the, on the spot. So it's a, it is a tough nut to crack as to far how to effectively cover it. And a lot of times they were depending on ORCA feed. Yeah. Yeah. Is there a certain committee that we should thank for their contribution to? Okay. Um, I, you know, um, I think any legislature, mm -hmm. legislator would be, if you know anybody, but uh, in particular, um, Ann Cummings, or Senator mm -hmm. Cummings, it's at, at Ch Senate Finance mm -hmm. is somebody um, who, uh, Jane Kitchell, if anybody knows Jane Kitchell. Yeah. Um, um, and there are uh, some other ones that are um, maybe not the Central Vermont ones, uh, but those are the two sort of Central Vermont powerhouses with regard to finances. Uh, there's some Burlington ones, but so, you know, in the work, they really sort of divvied up uh, who we talk to based on your, your representative or your senator. Uh, so, um, yeah, uh, <coughs> Senator Cummings has been sort of the one that I've been the primary contact with, uh, other than Lauren Glenn, who contacts them all. And Lauren Glenn Davidia is sort of the, uh, She's moving, she was the director of the public access or the government access channel at Burlington, but she's really moving into an advocacy role, really enjoys it and spends a lot of time yeah. shepherding the van advocacy team. So yeah. she's just been corralling and, and uh, getting people, our champions, identifying champions in the, in the legislature. So um, uh, I think even one of them will be coming to the van meeting next one, next Friday. Yeah. I forget, Cornbluff, Emily Cornbluff, I can't remember. Is that Maybe it's Corn Hunter, yeah. Uh, and, you know, um, Anthony Polina's, uh, you know, the, all the, all, even I had a good conversation with uh, Mary Hooper. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when I had a chance to spend some 20 minutes with her, so she, she obviously, um, she's house finance. Yeah. Mary, yeah. yeah Mary Hooper. Uh, and they all get it. You know, the ones that I've talk, talked to, I talked with Avram Pratt up, you know, at one point. Uh, so, uh, if you just anyone you talk to, uh, you know, if you can just spend their five minutes and say thank you yeah. and let them know how much you appreciate the money, I think it would be certainly helpful. Great. Yeah. And it's a small community. We do actually do come across them and do know them personally. So, and we'll know about the second round of funds in late May. 
actually probably by the end of next week. Oh, well, that's. I mean, they're they're looking to end the session by the, the sixth. Oh, wow. okay. And you yeah. know, predicting pretty, early. They're trying to get it done, and they may be there till midnight on Saturday, Friday night, or you know, they sure. may have to go on Saturday. But you know, it's, um, depends on if the governor tries to veto anything. Like any veto, yeah. Um, uh, more of the executive director's report or questions, accolades for Rob. Hey. Well, still on no, I, I, I would like to remind everybody that it's 739. Um, it could turn into a motion to set. Well, I'd like to, uh, as well. I'd like to uh, well both I have I have one question related to future stuff, but before we get to that, I just want to move, you know, make a motion to formally just thank Rob for the amazing work that you have done on behalf of ORCA and all of the positive and huge improvements and changes, the work you've done with staffing and process, and to say how glad we are to have worked with you and how sad we are that you're not going to be working with us. There's a certain amount of sadness, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so. And I heard that as a motion. That was a motion. And I second it. And some seconds. I third it. Third and fourth it. <laughs> All those in favor of uh, accolading and yeah. thanking and uh, <laughs> expressing. I'm going to miss you. Uh, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Oh, that was unanimous. And I, I will say I'm. Um, Bummed that I don't get to spend more time with Rachel and Chad as it is the, the new book. I'm excited yeah. what you guys can bring. So uh, we clearly scared you away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, time. Means and, nothing and we trust you'll be joining our board meetings as a guest on uh, oh, that's later right. in the evening. Can we count on you? Uh, sure. All right. We're can we catching up on YouTube? Huh? Would the chairman uh, say that's okay? Can we? Oh, certainly. We public comment only get a couple sentences in early. <laughs> Here's the report from the coast, of Massachusetts. <laughs> well, you know, you should see what the suburbs of Beverly are, and they put a big tower up there so it can reach here easily. And it was and, yes. and have a sign that says Our Beverly Hills town. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> they did. You know, they were certainly checking me out as the interview process went through, and they were looking at the content on Open Media. Uh, and I think they, one of the board members particularly noted um, Larry's Ableton on air as an evidence. Uh, mm -hmm. So, yep. so I, oh, yeah. interesting. I think that, you know, the, I, keeping that connection there, uh, obviously, I think it's important. You know, I, I was talking to Tony about, about it with some stuff with New England Cooks could obviously play down there, you know, as. as uh, That's funny you mentioned that Larry's show because he interviewed someone I used to work with. And I'm like, oh, I'll give this five minutes. And it was actually like, it held my interest. Like it was like, well, just good interview, not interesting information. I think the so thing it wasn't you that got you the job. It was Orca content that got you the job. Yeah. That's what you're telling me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, well, like, thanks for all. Oh, yeah. Um, now I do have a practical question. Yes. And if this is already covered, I apologize. Um, streaming revenues where do we stand on that legislative regulatory so that's the policy discussion that we're talking about after the bridge of the three years so um i think that, you know we had the legislative report that came out two years ago now uh which the department was adamantly against against streaming revenues well against the recommendations that were in the, this the, Department of Public Service. Um, so somebody has gotten in there and twisted their no, I, 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 um, Oh no, <laughs> absolutely. I told you this was gonna be huge. Yeah. I, and they basically thought it was, uh, you know, some of the, the suggestions that were made by Peter Blum, I think is the name of the consultant who was actually hired by the legislature for the report, um, yeah. were uh, legally on shaky, shaky ground. And obviously it, it is a big thing, as you, as you said, CJ, um, there are some powerful players in here that are, are trying to prevent that sort of thing from happening. Oh, yeah. There has a foothold anywhere. Yeah. They're screwed. I mean, there goes, you know, three to five percent margin. Yeah. And I think that, the, you know, they're uh, keeping an eye on. I mean, Vermont's really been focusing on the on the bridge gap funding for the three years and making room to be able to have that policy, policy discussion. On the, the national scene, it's always a discussion. Massachusetts, I'll be very interested in what's happening with mass access because they do have something in front of the legislature for this session that they've been trying to push. 
Um, Maine, I think, had some stuff happen that actually went through and is being challenged by the cable companies. You know, there is some stuff. So there are, are some uh, definitely uh, places to keep an eye on. Uh, I think in Massachusetts, it's one of those areas where I, you know, I'm not somebody who's just going to stick to Beverly. I'm going to be very involved and get involved with mass access. And um, even the board chair down there was like, tell me, you guys are going to the state house for money? <laughs> And I said, yeah, it's actually working. I don't know how it would work in Massachusetts. Yeah. I don't know if you guys are going to the late, the state house for money for an appropriation. I know that they are going for these two bills, which one of them is a streaming revenue bill. And I, I forget the other one what it is about. But um, yeah, it's a it's a bigger state. Uh, yeah. and and you've also got the high tech hub in Massachusetts, and they will be your friend in this because what you really want, in my opinion, which will benefit us here as well is to get the tech geeks in to say how it will work, why it will work, and then you just kill them on a technical argument because they're not going to be able to defend against it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, It'll be, I um, have had the assignment to try, and I, you know, uh, but I think that may be the way to go. But the, the great thing about you in Massachusetts with this in your pocket is if you can go and get the geeks in there, I'm, I've been hearing a lot about the tech world in, in the Boston area. So it's just, you know, <laughs> there's some robotic dogs that can yes. actually yes. dance. Yeah. <laughs> Get the yeah. MIT guys doing this stuff. Yeah. It, yeah, it does seem to be a culture that it really does have a quite a robust, over using that word, <laughs> um, uh, you know, uh, even talking to some of the people that are down there are just saying, yeah, you really will enjoy the Boston area. So, oh, for oh, tech, yeah. And it all started too, there, though. and then the networking companies went west, but they started there, and there's enough of that legacy left. Uh, Just being able to share policy successes and challenges from state to state, you'll be able, like a bridge mm -hmm. guy. Yeah. So yeah. That's great. Yeah. No, I think this is, from that perspective. This is yeah, I mean, I, I, I've done some of that already with the ATM Northeast board, but it'll yeah. be interesting to do the statewide. They have a, a pretty... Uh, Robust. <laughs> there you go. All right. Statewide organization. Yeah. Seventh robust. Day. And then if I can like ask you to make, make a note for yourself, um, <laughs> there's going to part of the other reason it's scary is because there's a policy uh, thing you can get in there. And as much as um, I'm playing for the on the wrong side of it for my old team, um, the uh, you know data privacy data the ability to determine which data gets blocked and that consumers know about it that's a natural um, lobby for a van type organization mass access to join and that's the other reason that it's really really frightening is that the ability to control data flows to people and the ability to to uh, keep people from seeing what data flows they are not getting is a really amazing control point to have and the, the biggest reason that I, in a, in a mild policy role, would have wanted to resist it is that um, it weakens, would have weakened our, our control, our ability to sell the fact that we have absolute control over what any of us sees. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's proprietary data. And just to add on to that, I know that there's, that there's national stuff happening as well. It's just that I don't, haven't been as involved in the national conversation, but I, I do hope to be able to go to the national conference, which will be in person. At the end of June in Chicago, but I obviously have to figure out if my new organization would, would pay for me to go there or not. I don't see why they wouldn't. Try to. It is just not the same being on a Zoom. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the past two years, it has been uh, virtual. So this is the first in person that they're having. Uh, and we did the uh, first in person for the region in, in Providence at the end of March. Uh, but as I said, I tested positive that morning, so I was not able to go. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Which is funny, because, you know, I, I was the committee chair and had been working on and dealing with the venue and setting up all these elaborate meals for the, you know, how many people we're going to have and who's going to make what, and then to sit up in my room and just know it was all happening four, four floors below me, oh, and then I couldn't go down and, and, and do anything. So it was just... Oh, that's you know, so frustrating. Yeah. It's uh, the last paragraph of your last executive yes. director's report. That's right. <laughs> COVID, you don't want it. <laughs> and it was interesting because I went I, Tuesday, I was sort of feeling symptoms, tested, nothing. Wednesday, as I'm like, all right, I have to bring equipment down there, go down to the conference and start setting up. So I'm in the main room with everybody. We're all masked. We all, you know, and we all, you know, showing our vaccination cards. 
but you know, some of them were like, Rob, you're not feeling well. I'm like, no, but I got to set this projector screen and this projector that I have for the main room. Uh, Rob, go rest. Yeah. You know, here's a better mask. And it's like, I tested <laughs> negative. And then I skipped the reception that night, the opening reception. And then that morning tested positive. And it was just oh, like, oh. but it was, you know, by Friday I was feeling better. Yeah. And I actually yeah. had a, concoct a plan to minimize because i'm like i need my equipment so if you guys can break down the equipment put it on the curb i'm going to come from my room mm -hmm. and i'll stay away and i just put it in my car and i'll go back into vermont um and then it's, you know i was feeling better yeah and so i'm like this is easy you know it's just a bad cold <laughs> and then sunday definitely it felt the, the rundown where it was like i carried a box from downstairs in the basement and i carried it up i'm like whoa i gotta sit down here for a little bit yeah. and then I, I kept testing positive so i didn't like for that week i was not coming to see these guys i said i'm gonna stay home yeah. try to work from home but it definitely was like all right yeah this is a little bit more serious than yeah. just a common cold so, but. it's very so many people who are vaccinated got it it's yeah crazy. it's a very capricious play mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. i have to step outside i apologize everybody that's all right yeah, we're we're about, I, 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 about, I about, in about 20 minutes so uh I That's the end of my report. I can entertain a motion to accept the executive director's report. So oh, and Mike has I'll second it. And Dave seconded. And, uh, thank you, Rob, for that and all of, all of the executive director's reports throughout the years. Um, well, is there any old, stale business sitting on the table? We need to vote on the motion. Two. Vote report. on the motion. Oh, I didn't. I didn't. Jeez, I did that twice. I did not get good seat last night. I have that. All those in favor, set, correct, or is indicated to say aye. 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 And those opposed nay. That's two in one night. Ouch. <laughs> um, <laughs> those eyes have it unanimously. Um, old business, any there? Yeah, brand new world with Rob leaving. Yeah. Um, yeah, and just taking Sue up on that offer to put together a were you imagining a kind of a written piece or a, yeah, just yeah. some notes, just you know, just your thoughts. Yeah, I would let, I was definitely curious about the balance between the technical, the managerial, the visioning, sort of yeah that, and like in the financial budget management stuff. Yeah, I would agree. I'm not on the hiring committee, but I'm. I busy? was thinking. Oh, it sounds like you're full. If you need somebody, no, there's room for one more. If you need somebody, I'd be room happy to. More. But uh, those are some very different skill sets. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That it's hard to find all in one person right. in Vermont. Yeah. So that's a lot to ask for. So what what are the priorities? Where do you where do you mm -hmm. think the most important pieces lie, and what can you kind of say? Ah, maybe I, you know, I can try to do this written report. If you guys want me to come in and just spend some time talking with you, council do that. You know. That's just, I tend to be better. Whatever you prefer. I tend to be better. Yeah. Illuminate on that. I mean, it's a yeah. virtual exit interview or yeah. think about, think about what format would get you most robustly divulging of your knowledge. Cause I fear it's the skills we don't notice that you have that we're going to most miss. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Like it's just going to be, Oh, think of that. I, I you know, if we work Why didn't they get taken care of? <laughs> yeah, oh. exactly. <laughs> I, you know, and my staff has been like, you know, what's, what's this Rob? What is that? This and like, I'm, and I'm like, well, we're trying to catch everything, but I know something will come up that we didn't see. Right. And we'll just be like, Oh, yeah. here, um, text so, you know, phone call two away. months from now and be like, Rob, where's this? What do you, what do we do? Somebody's calling us. You can be Alexa. Yeah. For us. <laughs> there you go. So we're uh, officially in old business. Thanks to Mike Doyle pointing out. <clears throat> um, is there any old business that we've, have been neglecting or maybe the last uh, approval of minutes reminded us of something. I think I think making sure that John Block Memorial becomes a ceremony at the next open yeah. house is a really nice tag there. Really nice. Um, Do we uh, things like that. Did you officially put Rachel on, on the committee for hire? Um, I mean, it's just a by fiat. I could just hand you the material. I mean, after this is up, you're up for it. Yeah. We did talk even number versus odd. You'd give us a fifth in case we're deadlocked. I doubt we will be, but... Yeah. Um, yeah, that'd be helpful. Excellent. I got I get some paper. I'll just walk you through what's what. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then um, we'll create an email thread where we kind of just brainstorm some questions mm -hmm. that we want to make sure we ask each candidate. And uh, do we ever summarize at the end of the legislative session um, not only what we uh, think has been accomplished, but what we've recorded and mm -hmm. how we've done it? Okay. Uh, and just an edit. Is it kind of wrapped up at the end of the session? I don't think there's any really sort of real summary other than 
the nice vast song. amount of content that we actually did. And then there's, you know, typically I think it runs into the you have like 12 to 15 pieces a week or it's just more. so much raw data but to be to be able to filter that down and tell the story of the of the months that even various you know recognize that what a great archive it is of the, of the legislative session yeah it's more like again uh, our taking notice for ourselves of what it is that this organization and then you know do. jim does drive that in, in looking at so it'd be interesting for her to say these are the things that we sort of focused on yeah this legislative session yeah. this is, and it's so if she followed a certain Track bill issues, or a certain yeah. topic. And, 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 but also in the, in be in dialogue with the legislative session and, and star certain decisions that were made that were controversial and that changed things that we had on an archive. You know, just the, yeah. the way that we help the community be, to be involved, oh but also legislatures and legislators themselves to communicate to their constituencies. You know, um, it's like an in-house documentarian to really pull that off well. Well, but it's, it's a great just, idea. And, it's and, more and, of an and, idea than uh, that we could well, start to build it, up. Yeah, it moves you from gavel to gavel into like the here. You can digest the narrative now. And, and all you need is a person that's willing to do it. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's nice. Other old business. It was. Uh, I don't know if it counts as old business. I need to brush up on my Robert's rules. <laughs> um, the, uh, you mentioned that they had applied for, they got the grant um, application in yeah. to the Arts Council. Do you know how much the amount that they end up? I don't recall what the numbers were. They um, met a Wednesday to they did. very recently. This one's It was last, the 20th. The 20th yes. Last week. The 20th. Uh, and what was the kudos? This is the grant from the, the Vermont Arts Council on digital capacity of, of local cultural organizations. Mm -hmm. And we went for a collaborative one, which was, you know, they were, they were really looking at there's individual grants for that. And then they even sort of, uh, and Chad and, um, connected us with Amy, who's the um, grant facilitator, mm -hmm. uh, helping us sort of understand what the grant would be. So it is uh, an attempt to be able to work collaborative, collaboratively with cultural organizations across the central Vermont, Vermont mm -hmm. to be able to build their digital capacity to reach and, and serve their mission, so. It's a multi-year program with yeah. the larger um, collaborative grants. Uh, I think it was up to 250, um, 250,000. A year? I don't know if it's a year, it's probably over the course of yeah. the thing. I know it's, it's a smaller three years. Like a three year, I think, yeah, for the smaller ones, or I think the cap was at 30. But I really did hand that off to Christopher and he enlisted the help of Jen, so the two of them, and I think with, with uh, Zach's support, um, really ran through the, the narrative and the numbers and stuff like that. So it's uh, um, uh, my appreciation for the work that they did on that and getting that done. Yeah. It's just really is and yeah, letting us know it exists. Yeah, and that's exactly the type of topic one would throw into old business. So yeah, yeah. entirely on topic. <laughs> um, any old business or move to new? I. It's not old business, so it's uh, it's a new idea. So new, new business, it is. I would think that one of the things that we, I think it is a niche in this community that's not filled yet, is something like, and I would maybe maybe label it, the annual Orca John Block Award to people who stretch too. themselves out and uh, help the community be able to hear all of the messages of all the voices and give it out every year at our annual meeting. Yeah. Yeah, we've talked about uh, a scholarship for a student, but never framed like that. Well, because so the problem with the scholarship is you have to have the fund to offer yeah. the scholarship. Yeah, yeah. And I, they know that they did that with Campitelli, with Scott Campitelli. They developed the scholarship. Right, fund right. And so that's an annual. That's an annual. Uh, comes out of graduation right. season. It, it didn't seem it seemed yeah. redundant to, to create something new. The high school is pretty automatic about that. I mean, if you want to create that. Scholarship run by the high school for yeah. the benefit of the students. That's pretty easy to do. Yeah, but I do like what Dave is saying that it's just sort of recognition for some of the the values that John and Bob body in his own work might mm -hmm. be something that you know you could do as an annual meeting, so that you add another thing, yeah. item of business for the annual yeah. meeting, the yeah. recognition for somebody in the, but, in the community. But my point being, with the high school and a scholarship, you've got an organization that's all ready to go. Yeah, and they'll tap on your shoulder every in, May in and case, say, where's the check? And they, it, right, it runs itself. In, in this case, you're creating yeah. a new situation. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if, it, if it's a scholarship of $1,000, I think that Oka could easily afford that. Yeah. Right. For the year. 
Uh, yeah, I think there, there, there could be money that. attached to it, but the thing would be the award. Yeah. And actually, having the community hear that in total what uh, one individual has been able to do to expand the idea of free speech, communication of ideas, interchanges, disagreements settled through uh, negotiations, compromises, and things of that ilk. It's um, really nice that we have nailed down when we are going to dedicate this. And we expect you there if it's in September or October when we end up doing it. But um, it does invite the next question and, and maybe this uh, that that's a good that's a good framework of how to, how to get that kind of well, Dave, maybe more you could write up uh, you know some of your ideas about that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, get yeah, get a little definition to it. Yeah. Other new business. Uh, I entertain a motion to adjourn at eight oh three. I see Mike Doe. So moved. Um, second. And Sue, seconding at 803. This one I'll remember to call the question. All this, <laughs> which you actually don't have to do on a motion to adjourn. <laughs> <laughs> if my Robert's rules are, are <laughs> three, motion to adjourn is uh, all.